Richard Gilbert Emery was born in London on February the 15th, 1915, to parents Laurie and Bertha, both performers on the music hall stage. Both his mother and father were in show business. His father was a comedian, and they were a, a number one act. Dick was just seven years old when his parents split, and he was forced to make a difficult choice. When he was playing as a little boy under the table, his father walked into the, into the room. I think he was very frightened of his dad. He looked under the table and he said, who do you want to be with, me or your mother? And he had to make that decision there and then. And I was, you know, he said, I want to be with my mum. Dick left school at 15 and after a succession of dead-end jobs was called up to the RAF where he served as an aircraftsman. While stationed in Cornwall, he married the first of what would be five wives during his lifetime. Dancer Zelda Barry, with whom he had a son, but Dick found being separated from his new family unbearable, so he deserted the RAF. Dick was eventually caught and sent to military prison. After serving a short sentence, he was forced back into the RAF, but this time doing something he adored, entertaining fellow troops in the gang show. There were quite a few big stars. Tony Hancock was, was in the gang show, and, and Dick played a very big part, and that's where he learned to do drag. Because they were all men. And so, you know, he used to drag up and, and do all the different characters that later on it became very big. When the war ended, Dick joined hundreds of other ex-servicemen looking for work in the entertainment industry. And after only a couple of years performing comedy routines in tiny theatres, Dick had his first taste of fame. Well, if it isn't Mr. Brood and Young Nipper and Rover the Sheepdog. Uh, it's not a sheepdog, it's Mr. Pitt. <laughs> Dick's professional life was in good shape but his personal life was in trouble. He was separated from his first wife, Zelda, and their son, and a second marriage to Irene Ansell had lasted less than a year. In 1955, Dick married his third wife, Iris Tully, with whom he had another son. But the following year, whilst headlining in a summer show, he met a young chorus girl called Vicky Chambers. I was 17, he was 43, and it was my very first summer show being Soubrette, where I felt very grown up. He was very warm, very funny, very naughty, and great fun, great fun. We sort of uh, flirted and, you know, had fun together. Um, but it really started when we got back and he phoned me to say that he was leaving his wife. Um, and would I have dinner with him? My parents went potty because uh, they were only five years older than he was. So, of course, there was a great gap in the age group. But being the little teenager I was, I was determined to go for it, <laughs> and did. By the late 50s, Dick Emery was a popular face on television, playing a variety of characters in many of the hit comedy shows of the day. You are obstructing a postman in the execution of his duty. <laughs> you are up Odin and obstructing Her Majesty's mail. <laughs> Whatever you said, I am not. Red Emily, I wonder if you'd mind helping us now that you're here. Uh, there's a good girl. Um, stick each horse up the Denmark Street, will you? <laughs> I beg your pardon. The Dick Emery Show was an instant hit, providing him with the opportunity to showcase the gallery of larger-than-life comic characters he'd been working on since his days in the gang show. Excuse me, madam. Miss. Uh, miss. Hetty was... A sex-starved spinster, based on the secretary in somebody's office. And I, I always thought she, she was a little deprived of the, uh, <laughs> the opposite sex. May I ask, do you lead an active social life? No, I don't. Not like the people in the flat above mine. I have wild parties every weekend. <laughs> Drinking and dancing and all sorts of wicked debauchery goes on. <laughs> Keeps me awake all night, they do. Well, haven't you complained to them? Yes, I have, but they still won't invite me. <laughs> well done, Mrs. Uptight. I'm sure that must give you immense satisfaction. <laughs> Do you believe that man needs the company of his fellows? Oh, yeah, I'm all for that, 100%. 100%. You believe that the friendship of man is something to be treasured? Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> that men and women should live together in harmony? Oh, now you're going to spoil it at all. My favourite character must be the bother boy. I think I've got it wrong again. <laughs> I just like the sort of like the 
silly naivety and the kind of like idiotic aspect of it. Uh, excuse me, may I bother you? Yes, but don't be rough. <laughs> My boyfriend says I'm never available. I have so many hobbies and I belong to so many societies. Well, hasn't he ever asked you to drop them? <laughs> well, if you did, he'd see a lot more of you. What the public didn't know was that the costumes and wigs concealed a man who didn't need to prove himself to anyone. He was a ladies' man, definitely. I mean, most glamorous, gorgeous um, girls fell for him. He was ever so proud of himself because he obviously went to the gym every two seconds, I would think. Looked after himself, had lovely aftershave, um, and very sexy. You're going on holiday, are you? Yes, with a friend. Abroad? No, he's a fella. <laughs> the Dick Emery Show quickly established itself as a mainstay in the TV schedules. What's in that dish there? Crumpets, sir. <laughs> Each program parading his familiar cast of extraordinary characters. Dick was much happier when he was actually playing characters. Difficult to determine exactly why that should be. I was very, very nervous of, of performing. I mean, it took me years to be able to perform in front of anybody. I hide me behind the character. So therefore, I've always been able to do, funnily enough, although I was nervous, if I did a character, I was fine. Dick always left learning his lines, I think, to the last minute. And I think that was a shame. And I, have intent, I have every intention of me. Hurry, I should do it again. <laughs> Little it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bloody hell. The only one thing he did have was a, uh, a ten to a times corpse rather easily. Uh, that anything could set him off, and then you'd have to do several takes to get him back on again. Maybe there's a traitor in the camp. <laughs> <laughs> he was a bit of a giggler. Silly He liked to make you laugh while you were working and so you had to uh, get over that and think bad thoughts or something. <laughs> as his fame grew, Dick's private life was becoming increasingly complicated as he toed and froed between wife Iris and girlfriend Vicky. We had an on and off relationship for eight years and I hadn't seen him for six months and I walked out of the door and there he is standing waiting for me. So I said, oh, Dick, not again, because I was just getting my life together. <laughs> and he said, no, I, you know, we have to be together. So um, we bought a shop and flat, and we were blissfully happy. We did mad things like flying to the Isle of Wight in a tiger moth, pitching a tent, you know, on the little air ground there, um, doing fried eggs and bacon. It's really happy. He was a very keen pilot. Oh, I do an awful lot of flying, yes, awful. I'll have to lift this up because I can't hear you, you see. Makes you a bit deaf, you know, this whole flying lot. <laughs> and uh, he took me out with him on three different occasions. On the first occasion, we left Blackpool Airport, and after about uh, ten minutes, the control tower said, uh, could you please report your location? And uh, he said, I'm over the sea. Uh, and I said to him, uh, did you want a bit better information? Then? Oh, it doesn't matter, he said. You know. And then uh, on the third occasion, uh, we were flying back from the Isle of Man, and he missed the Blackpool Tower by about 20 feet. I took up flying because it takes your mind off show business, off the entire world. You get up there and you're miles away from it all, and uh, you don't think about anything else but flying. He took us out in his Cessna, he had a Cessna, and uh, he, he's showing off, you see, because when he got the damn thing up, and we were absolutely shaking in our boots, but we didn't, we tried not to show it, but, but he tried to get us all to fly the damn thing, and of course we didn't do it. Do I think a Dick Emery is a pilot? I think he's an idiot, that's what I think. Dick eventually left Iris, and Vicky became his fourth wife in 1964. The couple had two children, Michael and Eliza. But within only a few years, Dick embarked on yet another affair with dancer Joe Blake, and his marriage to Vicky fell apart. When it was good, it was wonderful. When it was bad, it was horrid. There was no middle. It was either all up or all down, and uh, he could certainly take you down. <laughs> when he left me, um, I think again about six months later, he was begging me to come back, but I didn't go back. I said, no, it's too much. He did break my heart, I have to say, because he was my first love. 
I wanted to feel the bond more with him because I didn't spend enough time with him. I started writing music from very young songs and sending him songs saying, I want you to come back. And, and I think that really upset him. There were occasions when we were sort of left alone and we were down in South Sea and I just remember being sort of like, well, look, there's a fun fair over there. Here's some money, go for it. And I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. We were like, oh, you know, where, where are you off to? And then this, this young lady walked in, she was probably about 18. And she gave me a little smile and I went, oh, hello. And then he said, I'll see you tomorrow. He said, I've got the hotel staff going to watch you. I thought, wow, this is good, you know. So off he went and, of course, I phoned my mum and told her what happened. She was outra outraged. She, she was just livid. Despite the domestic dramas going on behind the scenes, throughout the 70s, Dick Emery's fans flocked to his summer seasons and pantomimes, and his Saturday night television show was regularly watched by audiences of over 17 million. It's the tunnelling programme, all mapped out here. Tunnel B is being dug under... Uh, under the bathhouse, sir. Under the bathhouse, bathhouse. Tunnel C is being dug under... Under the cookhouse, sir. The cookhouse, yes. And tunnel is... Uh, under the... <laughs> as Dick Emery moved into his 60s, his private life was as tumultuous as ever. Vicky had divorced him in 1968, and he'd married fifth wife Joe Blake the following year. Then, after 10 years with Joe, in 1979, Dick hired actress Faye Hillier to work on his TV show. American Express. <laughs> that should do nicely, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually several months before we realised that we, we actually had fallen in love and I think we both fell in love at the same time because neither of us were happy at home and I think we'd been fooling ourselves that if we could talk to each other and have each other's support we would make whatever relationship we should be in work. Although still married to Joe, Dick spent four years with Faye, who was realistic about the prospects for their relationship. He always said they'd call him Emery the Eighth if he had wife number six. <laughs> I used to think age possibly was on my side because he was getting too old to, to be philandering. <laughs> but I don't know, who knows? I like to think that we might have made it, but it wasn't to be, so. In December 1982, the pressures of his relentless work schedule and the stress of a tangled personal life finally caught up with Dick Emery when he was rushed to hospital with agonizing chest pains. I didn't go in because Faye and Joe were there in, in the, the ward. But the children went in and he, they said he was a shadow of himself. I always thought that he would come home and I said to the doctor, am I going to be able to cope with all this medicine when I bring him home? And the doctor said to me, I wouldn't count on bringing him home. And that was the first inkling that I got of just how serious it was. Dick Emery died of respiratory failure on January the 2nd, 1983, aged 67. At his funeral, the legacy of five marriages and a complicated extramarital love life was all too apparent. The funeral was a bit of a facade. Um, Joe and Faye were one in the front rows, you know. Well, it was a strange situation because there was um, a wife and a lover there on either side of the coffin and nobody quite knew who to talk to, who to sympathise with. I remember having a TV camera sort of here while I'm crying, trying not to cry but not succeeding and instead of grieving properly, you find yourself in a B movie. It's, you know, quite difficult. What are those things a boat's tied to? Bollards. <laughs> Don't start anything you can't finish, <laughs> sailor boy. He was my first love, and I've never ever lost that something that I had for him. It's, it'll always be there, because he's the father of my children. His laugh will always stick with me. The things that made him laugh, and when he laughed, it was kind of infectious. How do you like it? Hot and strong. Oh, and that's how you're going to have it, you darling. <laughs> Um, and you couldn't help laughing along with him. Good afternoon, Miss Dunnett. Oh, hello, Vicar. I see you have two magnificent specimens. <laughs> Pardon? I think it would be impossible to have lived with a man such as Dick without constantly thinking about him. Most of us gardeners would be proud to get our hands on those. <laughs> oh, you are awful. But I like you. 